We are looking at the Grade 11 November IT paper for the PRAC exam from the Eastern Cape in 2018. And we're dealing with the second question, which is the database question. And this is part one. So before we can uh, get into the database question, let's say, uh, first understand what is the data that we're dealing with. So let's say each record is uh, shift is kept so the, the number of guests at the table and the amount they will be paid blah 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 so there's this waiters database and this is the table you can see there's an auto number a wait id a guess and the amount paid and that's what it looks like okay in the table so we only got one table and big thing to take note of although i've made videos on filters just a reminder when it comes to exams you cannot use filters it's not in the syllabus. It's just a nice video to show you how to do filters. But you need, if you're going through all the records in a database or need to go through, search through something, you need to use the, the what I call the traverse when you go dot first while not end of file dot next. That's whole process. So please remember, do not use filters. Okay, so let's do question 2.1. So before we even do this 2.1, I just want to take you to the database, to the, the program. Um, my program just disconnected the database out of nowhere. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that connection if you ever need to. Sometimes the database um, ADO table in that could be in a data module. So always look over here to see if there's a data module. And you can double click on it to go get these um, parts. But as you can see, this is in the main form. And I just want to work, I think it's this. This, they've only got an ADO table here. So if I click on the ADO table, I'm going to just redo the connection. So there's a connection string. If they had a ADO connection, you would do this on the connection. So I'm going to click on the ADO connection. I'm just going to redo this connection. Let's rebuild it. And just the things to be aware of when you're building this connection string, when the box finally pops up, is we want to use the JET option. So go to provider, we want the JET option, the connection. Now I know it's connected to the database, but you'll see my it's not finding it because it's redone the location. So I'm going to go and look for it. It would be nice if they did this dynamically, but they didn't. So I'm going to go to wherever this file is. There it is. Let's go to the table. There's our waiters. I hope we didn't wait too long. Now there's the whole uh, long spiel. I'm going to delete all of the stuff so it's just the name of the database and that's because that database is in the same folder as my Delphi file so that's why I can just have the database name we don't actually need this so I'm just taking that out and let's just test it there we go now it's working and make sure that it's read right once that's all done we should have it now um, I'm not sure if the code requires us to make it active you could also make it active over here uh, if I looked at the memo there wasn't any mark allocations for it being active so the moment you make it active you should be able to see the stuff over here remember it also you had to specify the table name which was already done for us and this data source is what connects to the ADO table and allows the DB grid over here to connect to the data source okay but that's all done for us that's fantastic so let's get back to the question so that's what you do in the case that your database doesn't connect so calculate the total amount of money that was paid by customers during this shift display the total amount in currency format like that okay so we basically going through the entire table and just adding up all the table amounts so this is one shift um, so that's all it is it's just six marks so we're going through each we just totaling all the table amount paid values. Okay, so let's go. So we're starting from the top and we're going all the way through and we're adding them all up. So when we click on the total amount button, so we are obviously summing something. So we're gonna have a sum variable. Now, um, let's just double check. Those are integer values. Do they specify? We must just double check in the table. They look like integer values. Okay, now you can see in the table that they are currency, so they're probably going to be real. Now, though they're only displayed like that, they're probably going to be some sort of real value. So let's make sure that we use a real sum. And we are going to do, now the moment you're going through a database, going through each and every record, just write this recipe down. We're going to say the name of my ADO table, which is TBL tables. TBL tables dot first while not 
tbl tables dot end of file while we're not at the end of file we may have a begin and end and then at the end of the code that we want we can say tbl tables dot next that is your recipe every time you work and your code must go somewhere between here for what you want to do for each and every record so just remember you're always doing that so what do we want to do we want to total the sum we want to say r sum or r sum is equal to whatever is in r sum at the moment plus the value in that field which is how do we access that tbl tables open bracket or open square bracket open and then the name of that button this button we want the name of the field exactly like it is in the database you must spell it exactly so table amount paid so it must be spelt exactly table amount paid if you spell it wrong it's going to give you an error so what we're doing inside these two green lines here is we are doing the code that will run for one record and we must just believe just believe that this loop this first well not in the file the next will make it go through each and every record in the data so you just focus on what you want to do for one record the first record for example and then this these three things there will make it run through all of the fields in the database I think that's all we want to do but remember the very first time we do this we add in onto our sum and our sum needs a default value so we should initialize our sum to zero so it's a zero so the first time it'll be zero plus the amount which would be the 450 then the second time it'll be 450 plus the 250 so that'll be 700 so our sum will be 700 then the next time the 700 plus the 480 and so on and so on until it gets to the end once it gets to the end what are we doing well, we need to display it like that in this component, which I don't know what it is. Let's have a look. This is a rich output. So we're going to say uh, rich output dot lines dot add. And we want to have the word total amount colon. Total amount colon plus our sum. Okay, but we want our sum to two decimal places and a currency. And this is this takes a whole string that's a string that's okay but this is not a string so it's converted from a float to a string but we want special features so we put float string f we have the value that we want oh i didn't spell that right float to string the value that we want followed by the format ff control space we want the currency option then i want eight in front of the decimal and two after the day that's the important bit because we want two decimal places and then we must close the bracket for the float to string f. I think that works. Let's have a let's run it. So it goes to the first, goes to all the records, and then it should total it for us. Ah, oh, it says there total amount paid not found. Ha! Huh. So it says it doesn't recognize that field. So let's go here. Total amount. Ah. Oh. Did I say total? It's supposed to be table. Do you see what happens if you don't spell it correctly? I did that on purpose, obviously, the printing error. Table amount paid. It must be exactly like it is there. So that's the error that you would get if you misspell the field name. Hit try right now. And you read it in the same month. There we go. Fantastic. I think the close button works already. Fantastic. Let's do the next question because it's very quick. It's only one mark. Sort the information according to the waiter ID in ascending order. So you need to know which field we want the waiter ID field. So that's what it's called. And we want to sort it. So we are simply, it's one line. It's one mark. So it must only be one line. So we take TBL tables. And there's a sort property, which is a type of string. And the string is whatever field you want to sort by, exactly the way it's spelt in the table, followed by either ASC or DSC, depending on if you want ascending or descending. In this case, we want ascending actually you don't even need to put the ASC in because it'll default it to AC but that's what we will do if they ever want you to sort by two criteria I mean first by waiter ID then by something else then you just put a comma and then you could say table ID ascending you could do something like that if there's two criteria but in this case it's just one one mark boom I think that's all we need sort by waiter ID is that the right spelling looks like the right spelling so there we got the total and if you sort so these must be sorted if i click on it hey there we go fan 
Fantastic. So there we go. That's the first part of the database question. For more videos from this exam paper, as well as other videos for grade 11 content in Delphi, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.